the Odyssey, the Iliad, the tragic tale of Oedipus. There have been many tragic stories told over the course of history, tales that have shaped mankind for better or for worse, but none more tragic than the tale of the infamous Oolong tribe of Survivor Palau, a modern day tragedy that shaped Survivor for the better or for the worse. How is this the saddest tribe in the history of the show, and what exactly happened to make their tale oh so tragic? Let's find out. Before we begin, I want to thank you all for supporting this channel. Subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing are as crucial to this channel's growth and makes all of this possible. If you want to do more to help keep the ship afloat, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You get all videos weeks before they ever see the light of day here on YouTube, and you get also get to vote for which survivors I tell the stories of, and even get an exclusive Patreon-only video each month like this one. Thank you for your support. Up front, you need to be warned. This story does not end happily. In fact, very little of the story is happy at all. There may be a fleeting moment of joy, but it will be stripped away. So if watching a tribe suffer and suffer is not your cup of tea, then I recommend looking away. It all starts well enough as most stories do. The beginning of Survivor Palau is an anomaly as 20 strangers are abandoned on a beach and are simply left to survive. No tribes, no food, nothing. However, the first two people who reach shore are granted immunity, and the next morning, Jeff Probst explains to everyone that these immunity necklaces let these two people pick their own tribes, and by the end, only 18 people are selected, and two are left to be sent home. The tribes are named Karor and the infamous Oolong tribe. You guys are Oolong. You wear blue. Ian from Karor says that he likes the tribe that he picked because it has a good mixture of wisdom and strength, while Oolong is just very young. I'm altogether very, very happy. I wanted a wise tribe. If, we had the, if I had the opportunity to pick, we got a little bit of the older folks, which I really like, and we're up against a bunch of the young bugs. While Ibrahim of Oolong says they have a clear leg up on Karor due to their physical strength. We definitely have some kind of advantage, which I don't care what you say, you know, smarts in it too, but athletics is going to play a part in it also. And so it is time to prove what each tribe is made of as their first challenge is for immunity and reward. There are crates containing food, water, and fire, and all are separate from each other. It is up to each tribe how many crates they want to carry, as that will be their reward if they win. So the more crates they take, the more they could win, but it's also more work that they have to do. Karor chooses to take just one crate containing fire, while Oolong picks food and water and ignores fire. Having to do twice the work to carry these two crates versus Karor's one, it ultimately doesn't help them, and it is their demise as Karor wins easily. At Tribal Council, Oolong votes out Jolanda, their perceived leader since she did pick their tribe, and has been giving orders, but her personality has been clashing with others because they don't like being told what to do. Ashley says we're voting out Joe. Are you in? I was like, hell yeah, I'm in. Jolanda, tribe spoken. Moving into episode two, James tells us that Jolanda being gone is great for Oolong as no one is telling them what to do anymore and they don't have to follow a leader since uh, their tribe is a democracy. Without Jolanda around, everybody's feeling good, you know, because there's nobody telling people what to do. We're not gonna follow a leader. We can make our own decisions and be democratic about it. We're Americans and we're gonna do democracy. Oolong bounces back from that immunity loss in episode one with a reward challenge victory here. They get fire, fishing gear, and finally have water. And she's across! Oolong wins the award! This, ladies and gentlemen, is the high point for Oolong in this tragic tale. Enjoy it, relish it, because it doesn't last for long. Tonight is gonna to be our first time we had fire, our first time we have water, and our first time we're eating in four days since we've been here. We're all famished and we're ready to chow down. The immunity challenge is coming up and Survivor has given both tribes a handy dandy cheat sheet to learn Morse code as that will be a crucial part of the next challenge. The Oolong tribe works together as a team and practices it in a pretty effective way. Unfortunately though, it makes zero difference at the immunity challenge as they fail so hard on the physical part of the challenge that they never even reach the Morse code portion 
of the immunity challenge. Check in. Check in. Ashley is then the second member voted out of Oolong for being perceived as weak and, well, frankly, she has been sick. Ashley, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Episode 3 begins with Oolong expressing how much they hate tribal and they never, ever want to go back. We cannot lose any more people. We can't. I would rather not know what Tribal Council is like. It's time for some redemption, time to shift the tides and get the momentum back in Oolong's favor. After a war challenge, they win and net themselves a sewing kit and cloth to make new clothes. Ah! Oolong wins reward! Yeah! Ah! After a successful reward challenge, everyone then takes a break and slacks off while Bobby John seemingly does everything around camp. They clearly lack leadership, but that is because they don't want anyone to lead them in. It clearly shows. I'm very disappointed with my tribe right now. I mean, just little things just have to be done. I'm not going to wait for everybody to have a group meeting. Let's decide. Well, when you decide, that's time. Later on at night, Jeff, one of Oolong's strongest members when it comes to challenges, is walking when he steps on a loose coconut and re-injures an injury that he actually had had the year before. And he rolls his ankle, making himself not able to stand or walk properly without making literal tears come out of his eyes. Came walking down the beach, stepped on a loose coconut. Just my luck, rolled it. It's a, my ankle that I had problems with last year. He has a little bit of hope though, as he doesn't expect a challenge for another day or so, but what do you know? They actually have a challenge that same day, and it is a physical one. Basically here, each tribe is carrying seven 20 pound backpacks evenly distributed amongst all seven members, and they need to catch the other team to win going around the circle. Jeff, however, has to immediately drop out of the challenge, and each tribe does eventually get down to three members each, carrying all of their tribe's weight. Oolong loses in a valiant effort, but it is clear that with a healthy Jeff, they would have easily won this challenge. Come on! Roar wins their third immunity challenge in a row! Woo! Back at camp, Jeff volunteers to be voted out, but not everyone seems to be on board with this, but Jeff says he's quite aware of what this injury will do to him, and he knows that for a minimum of three weeks, he won't be good enough to even contribute again. Oh, Jeff says, guys, you need to vote me off. Oh, we were sad. You know, we didn't want to vote him out. He's strong. You know, he does a lot around here. The tribe ultimately does give in, though it is not unanimous, and Jeff is sent home. Jeff, the tribe spoke. After three tribals in a row, Oolong is now directing their anger at Karor, who they still view as weak for using strategy at the immunity challenges instead of just relying on their strength. Karor is using strategy when it comes to the immunity challenge. Yeah, because challenges. they're weak ass teams. Each tribe then gets a note in regards to an upcoming unknown event. They each need to pick a representative. In seasons past, this has implied either a merge, which is much too soon here in this season, or possibly a player swap situation. We represent you. Hey, we're picking out a hat. You wanna see what the challenge is and then go from there? Yeah, we have to go fishing right now. Let's go. Yeah, we'll do that. Oolong decides, meh, we'll figure it out later. Let's go out and fish, which is exactly the opposite of what Karor does, who makes a decision pretty quickly and shows a clear lack of leadership at Oolong. Not picking a representative visibly annoys Jeff Probst, as it turns out that this wasn't even that big of a deal, as the representative only has to pick what tools the tribe gets to use for their reward challenge. Who's your representative? Where are they gonna be Can we ask questions or no? Can we ask you questions? You have not picked a representative yet? You guys don't have a leader, you can't even pick a representative. James is picked and he seems like the right choice for the job as he has a history of doing construction work. However, it becomes very apparent that his leadership style is not well received and ultimately annoys quite a few of his tribe mates. I'm happy to have James as a team leader, but he can be very fatherly which can be annoying at times. It makes me mad that James is like, oh, do you need help with that nail? Because I know what I'm doing. Oolong does a solid job with their building of their bathroom and shower, but ultimately, once again, Karor does a better job and wins reward, leaving Oolong shocked and disappointed once again. And uh, Karor gets an entire shelter built for them by Survivor Production for winning this reward, just showing the clear divide between how well they're doing and how bad Oolong is doing. I guess the other team won. 
I don't get it. Probably just because they haven't won one yet. No. That's BS. At the immunity challenge, Oolong needs this badly, but it takes until they are down five to two in a game where six points wins it all, and they're one point from losing, and they kick it in a high gear and bring themselves back to a five to five tie. And you wasted no time, Karen did! Yeah. Oolong has yeah. battled back five, five times! This is it, one last battle, James versus Kobe. Whoever loses goes to tribal council. Shoulder. And he's got him! James is in! Four wins their fourth straight immunity challenge! As you should know by now, don't give Oolong any hope because they lose and secure their fourth straight immunity loss in a row. Back at camp, they are sick sick and tired of losing over and over again when it counts the most. So far they are two for seven with any challenge and it is killing morale. I am so sick of losing, but yeah. I don't know what to do. I've never lost this bad in my entire life. At Tribal Council, Jeff points out how the men essentially actually lost it for the tribe as the women got most of the points except Kim who Jeff seemingly gets onto for doing nothing. I saved your seats for you from last time. Appreciate it. Today took six points to win. Five of their six points came from beating the men. Kim is then voted out and Oolong is now down to five of their original nine members. Kim, trap spoken. It's time for you to go. After Tribal, it looks like it's going to rain and the not so great idea of looking for the cave in the pitch black is presented and everyone goes along with it for a minute before realizing that they are making a terrible mistake and they don't even know how to find the cave. They don't even know where it's at. There's a wall in front of us, right? See this here? That's a rock. A I think we're totally lost. Which is a perfect analogy for what is happening right now as Oolong is like a tribe walking around at night looking for a cave without any sort of leader, any sort of light to help guide them on the path that they need to be on. It is time for the reward challenge, but there is a twist. While the reward gets them some much needed food if they win, no matter what happens, both tribes are going to tribal council. Because win or lose, both tribes are going to tribal council tonight. Both tribes will vote one tribe member out. Talk about sucking out the point of even trying in this challenge, giving Oolong any hope at turning the sinking ship around as no matter what happens, no matter how they do, they will be down to four people after this challenge and after tribal council because both tribes are going. So not surprisingly, Oolong loses the challenge seemingly due to Ibrahim's inability to dive, making all of the difference. Once again, another hit to the morale as a tribe. Four wins reward! <laughs> After Kuror is done with their tribal and they vote out their member, they get to sit at tribal and enjoy their food watching Oolong go through the entire process, and Oolong just feels terrible looking at Karor over there eating all their food. Oh my god, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cry. Are y'all gonna cry? Oh, this is good. Oh. Jeff does make a slightly humorous remark about Oolong enjoying tribal, and a twist is presented. Karor, after listening to all of Oolong's tribal council, gets to vote for one member of Oolong to be granted immunity. They vote for Ibrahim, and this is lucky for him as he was next on the chopping block it seemed like, and Angie is voted out instead, leaving Stephanie as the last remaining female member of their tribe. Angie, the tribe is smoking. It's time for you to go. Steph, rock the ladies. Back at camp, Stephanie says she has a new plan for Oolong at challenges. From now on, they need to do a lot more listening and a whole lot less talking over each other. While she is saying this, she is ironically cut off by James who runs his mouth basically parroting what Je Stephanie was already saying in the first place. For the next challenge, not only do we need to have great listening skills, because yeah, I also everybody not needs had, to listen. I mean, like keep your ears open and listen to your teammates. At the reward challenge, each tribe has to use a machine gun to shoot down their targets and it gets down to the wire as it is 7 to 7 and the first team to get to 8 wins. If Stephanie can make the shot, she wins it for Oolong and... Yeah! 
She does just that. They win only their third challenge so far, and it seems like maybe there is hope once again for the scrappy underdog of a tribe. They then get to bask on the reward and take a much needed break from all their batterings and beatings that they have been taking so far. What they don't know is that in this tragic story, it will not get better from here. It will only get worse. There's no happy ending for them, only little moments of joy in this tale of pain and suffering within the context of Survivor, of course. From here on out, we win. We, we win. win. We're and, buddies. And keep going, going with the tide. For their immunity challenge, they have a box with the opposite tribe's flag in it, and they need to make it impenetrable. James has a brilliant idea. Instead of making a lot of knots, why not use all of the rope and make one impossible knot? They do just that and go into the immunity challenge with a lot of swag and a lot of confidence. I'm pretty sure this is ours for the taking, so we're gonna win. Though, this does not work out at all, as during the challenge, Karor takes the time to make more and more knots on their box, while James on Oolong is preoccupied with fixing his skirt and Ibrahim is just kind of sitting in the water waiting for Stephanie and Bobby John to get back. Oolong ends up losing, of course, due to them having far too much confidence in James and his impossible knot. Karor yeah. wins their fifth straight immunity challenge! At Tribal, James says he thinks that it's very possible that Oolong is just mentally unable to win, but Jeff points out how two members, including him, were just physically lazy at the immunity challenge. Do you guys think he gave 100% the last immunity challenge? Ibrahim took a leisurely stroll to the middle, doing what I'm still not sure, and you stepped back there, messing with your skirt for two, three, four minutes. Wow. James is then finally voted out, leaving only three members remaining for Oolong. James, the tribe has spoken. Go. Episode 7 begins and Stephanie suggests that they could possibly come back. They could turn this whole thing around. Sometimes the best finish, you know, the people in last always turn around, like second half team almost. Make it happen. She and Ibrahim think there is possibly a merge right around the bend. After all, there is currently 11 players left in the game. And if there is a final two, as there has been every season, that means the jury will be nine people. That seems like a reasonable amount, and so this is possible. Now I want you as the viewer to not buy into the hype here. This tribe peaked in episode two. There are no comebacks. There's no happy ending for Oolong. They will fall apart one member at a time. They go on to lose the SOS challenge due to their placement of their SOS and then lose the immunity challenge as well by picking Bobby John over Stephanie to be the caller on a puzzle and 30 minutes into the immunity challenge realize their mistake. All in all, just terrible decision after terrible decision. With that, Thor wins immunity for the sixth straight time. At Tribal, they vote out Ibrahim and it's just Bobby John and Stephanie left. Ibrahim, Travis spoken. Episode 8 begins with another unfortunate event. Oolong loses a very winnable reward because Bobby John tries stuffing all of the food into his mouth at once instead of eating it one at a time like Tom Westman. Once again, they are simply outwitted by Karor, the seemingly weaker tribe. Tom's got it! Karor! Ah! Bobby and Stephanie are hurt. They feel like they're always so close to winning, always inches away, but they constantly fall flat to Karor. It's time for immunity, and as we already know, they lose. And Jeff tells them that Tribal Tonight will be a final challenge for Oolong to decide who the last remaining castaway will be. They only won three out of 14 challenges, and not one of those wins was in any immunity situation. Stephanie says it will be scary being at Oolong alone if she's the last remaining member, and this is truly a do or die situation for her in the context of Survivor, of course. It's do or die. If I don't win tonight, I'm out of the game completely. If I win tonight, there is a whole variety of things that could happen. At Tribal, Jeff explains that they will each be making fire, and whoever can light their torch with the fire they build wins and secures their spot as the last Oolong member. First person to build a fire with the flame high enough to light their torch wins immunity, stays in the game. Stephanie wins in a fairly short bout against Bobby John and is now all alone. Steph has a big flame. Steph's torch is lit. Just like that, this challenge is over. Steph wins immunity. Episode 9 begins and it is a dire situation as she can't catch any fish and almost hurts herself getting one lone coconut. I'm done. 
Went fishing, no fish, went clamming, no clams. Tried to do that bamboo thing, almost dislocated my shoulder. She does finally get a note that says go to the Karora Beach and upon her arrival at their luxurious shelter, she discovers that Oolong is no more and she has joined Karora for good. And it's not anything against Oolong, it's just I'm so done with that. This is a new chapter in my life, I feel like. I'm ready to start winning. Thankfully, this tale is over for Oolong. It was a long series of unfortunate events for them, where pretty much every single episode was nothing but dismay. But wow, is it not a fascinating study of what happens when a tribe simply cannot pull together and there's no tribe swap or merge to save them from imploding? Thank you for tuning in, and I want to give an even bigger thanks to the patrons as they made this video happen and it was made at their request. Once again, thank you for watching.